Hey guys, over here I have Ansel OBD2 adapter. It's called uh, BD200. This is how it looks and it's a wireless device. It's a Bluetooth device, a Bluetooth uh, low energy. So it should work both with Android and iOS devices. And over here I have my Goldmark 7 TDI and I'm going to disconnect something just to trigger the check engine light on the dashboard. And we will see how this device will handle this situation. If we can read the code, if we can clear it and what kind of uh, diagnostic data we can check using this device. So let's get to it. This should do the trick. Now let's check if I have a check engine light. I have a glow plug and start or stop system malfunction. Okay, that's great. Let's connect the device and let's check what we can see. Ignition on. Let's start the app, connect. And straight up, iOS system is connected to the device. Right now we are going to enter diagnostics. And let's see what's here. We have one pending DTC. Mass or volume airflow sensor A circuit intermittent. And that's correct because this is exactly what I've disconnected. I've uh, disconnected the sensor on the um, intake manifold. So... Right now we can see that the uh, fault is uh, Volkswagen specific and we have even a background uh, about this fault and a Google button to check out more information about this um, uh, this uh, issue. So right now I'm going to reconnect the, um, reconnect the sensor and we're going to try to remove this fault. Okay, back in the car, connect, select device, wait a few seconds, go to diagnose, and clear the code. Code's cleared and rescan, and we have no faults right now, so I guess it's good for uh, reading and clearing fault codes. Straight away we can go into data stream and we have some data provided uh, by the engine control module. We can check uh, some temperatures if the DPF is right now in regeneration. We have ambient temperature and intake temperature and other, other um, diagnostic data and we can uh, select which data stream we want to view at the moment. So this device is um, probing the car, it's checking which, uh, what kind of data is available for you and after a few seconds you will have a whole list uh, which you can toggle um, on and off. Mm, you can uh, toggle on and off uh, what uh, are you inter interested in like for example fuel rail pressure, maybe let's select something else, let's disable the um, ambient air temperature, okay and let's start the car. It's going to be easier if I have my phone over here. So you can see RPM live. If I rev the car, you can see that it increases. Also, let's go to the, what I've selected, fuel rail pressure. Where's the data? Okay, we can see it. And when I rev the car, You can see how it uh, moves up and you, can, you have minimum and maximum values over here as well as the average value calculated from uh, those readouts over the period of time that you have your um, diagnostic tool enabled. So now maybe the diagnose report. Let's run it. Let's check what's here. Oh, we have I am readiness. We have trouble codes, freeze frames, data streams. O2 sensor, onboard monitoring and mode 09, whatever this is. And after a few more seconds we should have all the information collected. Let's give it a few more seconds. 
Okay, so we have four finished readiness tests and those will be performed, uh, performed while driving, I believe. Okay, no trouble codes, no freeze frames and we have 41 data streams, we can check them over here. What's else over here? Um, O2 sensor data mode 09 which is oh we have the vehicle identification number we have some calibration IDs okay so it gives you pretty much all the uh, all the information that any good uh, universal OBD2 scanner would give you not something that you see often in universal diagnostic tools but you can apparently connect with the transmission this car is equip equipped with uh, automatic and DSG transmission so there there is a transmission control unit so let's check if we can connect with the transmission I believe so because we have some data over here let's wait a little bit longer and we can check um, calibration IDs we can check um, uh, trouble codes which are none right now we can check some data streams like the quantum temperature engine temperature and control module voltage okay i guess that the uh, transmission module is not providing much data over the uh, obd um, um, diagnostic interface but still you would uh, you would have your um, transmission trouble codes over here if uh, the transmission uh, was faulty so now let's go to dashboard it's a cool feature you can um, check the live data from your car and um, in this nice view there are some presets ready over here you have some analog dials you have digital ones and i believe if you long press on it you can adjust it so for example this is rev counter and it at it it ends at 8000 rpm and this is a diesel engine which ends at 6000 and the engine will rev to 500 5000 i believe so let's adjust it let's go to pit settings and the range from 8000 down to 6000 okay okay and we have it adjusted properly okay so now let's turn it on and you can see that it's working this way we can monitor some values like engine coolant temperature or vehicle speed there's a little bit of a lag in the transmission but i believe that's the obd2 standard it doesn't provide you uh, data quick enough for um for example um, rev counters it's uh, too slow the, the transmission is too slow and there's too much lag to use it as a regular left counter or a shift light but for data like um, your coolant temperature or your exhaust um, uh, gas temperature it will be just fine maybe let's try the battery check what do we have over here okay so let's start the test please turn off the vehicle then press ok it's off start the engine And we have the results over here. What was the minimal voltage? It drops down to 7.6 volts. So I believe this battery is uh, at, it, at its end. And the max voltage during the, um, during the start of the engine was close to 117. Uh, and right now we can see that the um, voltage is at 14 and, uh, and a half, let's say. So the alternator, alternator is working correctly, but the battery itself cannot keep the charge properly and I believe that this battery should be replaced soon. So overall I have to say that I really like this device and the mobile application over here at least on the iOS it's uh, it's made very well and with those um, simple universal diagnostic scanners like we have over here it also goes about um, two things how well is the user interface designed if it's easy to use and if the DTC with if the diagnostic code uh, database is complete if you can uh, find your faults and over here we not only found, found uh, the code and the description but we also got some uh, tips about the about the fault why uh, we have it in this car and how to fix it 
And also we had a simple Google button that um, that took us to Google with uh, some um, more information about this specific fault. So I've checked few options over here, like the transmission, the DC lookup, the battery uh, test, and some of the diagnostic features. There, there is many more over here which you can uh, you can check. And I believe that if you want to have something in your car for those uh, moments when your check engine light just pops up and you are in the middle of nowhere, it's a really good device to have in your glove box ready and to uh, connect with your onboard diagnostic port. So again, this is Ansel BD200. Uh, there will be some more technical specification about this device in the description below this video, as well as link to online store if you want to buy one. Um, that's it for today. Give me a thumbs up if you like this uh, short and simple test and review and subscribe for future ones. See you soon.